Hi everyone, it's DJ from Music Tech Australia. Today we're going to look at the sticky subject of how to make all your MIDI files the same volume. This is a question I get asked a lot from working musicians. So we're going to have a look under the hood and see what makes MIDI files go up and down in volume. So there are about five major things that make MIDI's change volume and they are control change 7 which is the master volume, control change 11 which is expression volume, the effects, control change 91 which is reverb, control change 93 which is chorus and also a very important one, velocity which is the dynamics of performance and that's how hard something is struck. So what we're going to do is use the mighty Cubase Pro 11 to do all these edits on. I'm going to show you how to do the technique on the drums. So we'll have two exactly the same drum kits and then you can take that technique, take it right across the board, make all your parts level and mix correctly to the drum kits. So here we go. Righto, let's get into this. I've loaded two commercial MIDI files, I Should Be So Lucky and Smooth. So these are two really different styles of tracks, but you still need them to be the same volume. Let's have a listen to Smooth. I Should Be So Lucky. So we can see there, there's a big discrepancy between the two output volumes. So what I'm going to do now is dive into fixing the drums and I'm going to show you the technique for doing that and making the drum kits exactly the same. And then you can take that technique and apply it to all the tracks throughout the MIDI file and as a result you'll have two MIDIs exactly the same volume. Here we go with the drums. So let's expand the folder track of I Should Be So Lucky. As I said, I'm using Cubase Pro 11 to achieve all these edits. And if you've got that program, great, you can follow along with all the shortcuts. But if you don't, that's okay. They'll work on any um, digital audio workstation or any MIDI editing software because everything requires the same protocols to actually play back MIDI tracks. There are five things that actually affect the final output of a MIDI. And what I'm going to do is open up the list editor here and show you some of those. So this is four out of the five. And we can see at the very top of the track, we have this thing called CC7, which is an abbreviation of control change. CC7 is the measurement from 0 to 127 of the main volume of the track. So while I'm in here, I'm going to change that to my standardized formula of master volume for drums to 120. And then go to the next one. The next one is control change 11. Now that is the expression volume of the track. That's a technique that's used to do volume swells throughout the song. So if you've got a, um, uh, like a dynamic performance from double P going up to double forte, you would use a string of control change 11 to affect a volume swell. You want to make, that, make sure that starts at 127 at the beginning of the track. That's an important thing. The next one is control change 91, and that's the effect of the reverb. So you don't want to have too much reverb on drums, or at least I don't like that because it, it, it uh, rings out the kick drums, makes everything a bit washy. So I'm going to give that its standard default setting of 40. The next one is control change 93. This is chorus and you want to make sure you don't have any value on drums for the chorus. So that's an effect that doesn't really suit drums. But if, it's, if you do find it in a track, it can make the, the drum kit sound louder. So I like to ride that at zero. These are my preferences that I like for standardizing my MIDI tracks. The main thing is that you develop your own exactly the way you like it. You might like to run all your kits at 100 or might like to run your kits at 120 in the master volume, but just decide which one you want. Now we're going to open up the drum editor. And this is where we can actually see all our individual drums splayed out on the screen. Over here, we've got the kick drum. Okay, now I want to show you the difference here. There's two kick drums that you can use. There's B0 and C1. B0, C1. B0 is a, what's called an acoustic bass drum and then just standard bass drum. But for me, B0 just has more bottom end and I like to use that one all the time. Now, I've got to stress that if you're looking to standardize your MIDI files, you need to pick one of those kicks and always go with it. Okay, so we've identified our kick drum that we're going to use, which is B0. That's the big fat acoustic drum. And we're going to highlight all of those. Now I'm going to draw your attention down to the bottom of the screen or the bottom of the editor and we see these red lines which are all indications of velocity values. If I put my mouse here you can see that says 97, this one says 107. 
So this is, I'll do it with this one here at 96. This is a uh, softer kick than this one here at 105. So if I draw this line up, you can hear that getting louder. Now, of course, a real drummer is going to play uh, with dynamics during the performances. Ba boom, ba boom, and this, the first one might be softer than the second one. If we were to make all of those exactly the same velocity, let's do that for a second. So now they all sound exactly the same. And what that does is it loses its, its impact. We don't want that. But what we do want is all of these kicks to rise up within the same ratio of performance. So we want to keep this little velocity gap between those two kick drums there. So what I'm going to do is highlight all the kicks, which I have up here on the top. Then inside the drum editor, I'm going to come over to the velocity window up here where it says 96. I'm just going to use the wheel on my mouse to drive that up as far as it's going to go. As I do that, you'll see the velocity lines down the bottom going up. Okay, now I've hit the loudest point. So that means, because it's, it's taking its reference from the first kick drum here, that means that kick has arrived at a velocity of 115, and the second kick drum, we'll find out what that's at. That's at 124. This one's at 115. But we do want to standardize this. So we want the loudest kick or the, the, the heavy hits to be at 127. So we're going to highlight all of those again. The reason that that has stopped at 115 is because somewhere in this velocity map, there's a kick drum that is 127, which is the maximum it can be. And so everything is stopped short of a few points. So what I'm going to do now is use, use the tool within the MIDI menu, which is called Velocity. And this has got various functions in it, um, subtracting and adding. I'm compressing and expanding. This one I want to limit. So I want to limit the, the loudest kick drum to 124. All right, so straight away we saw all these kicks come down to 124. Now I'm going to go ahead and push that up. So now the first kick here has gone to 118. Second kick drum should be at 127, and it is. And then this one, which has also got a big line there, 127, so on and so forth. So I've achieved what I want there with my kicks. Now it's time to look at my snare drum. And that's the, um, well, over here it's titled electric snare, but it's, it's more of a, just a harder, brighter snare. That's the snare that I prefer. Some people prefer the D1 snare, which is this one here. And that has a sound like kind of a little bit more 80s perhaps I find that that tends to get lost in the PA so I'm going to keep it on E now I'm going to highlight all of those once again we can see our velocities down here have some variation so I'm going to push this I like my my louder snare to be also 127 okay so I've probably achieved what I want got to be careful with snares because if you make them all the same velocity let's have a look through here yeah there isn't any actual press rolls but in other songs you're going to find sometimes the velocity curve stand starts really soft so let's have a look at these first little this snare run here for example now in some situations the snares are going to come up in more of a curve like just do that again so it might be like a press roll where it's going from soft to loud all right i'm just going to undo that because that's not what we need in this song but when you when you're doing your velocities be careful not to rob the dynamics of the snare performance and it's yeah so you want to keep the ratio right all right so the snare drums now where i want it i think it is what's that 126 124 124. Ah, okay. Well, it looks like I might have to do a tiny bit of limiting because I've got a little variation there. Once again, I'm going to do that MIDI limiting. Let's bring it to 125. Drop it up. 
Now, the majority of my hard hitting snares are going to be 127, which is what I want. So having done the snare drum, now I'm just going to solo the kit by pushing S up here on the left of the editor and I want to hear just how the drum kit's sounding before I make any more changes. Pretty happy with that. Hi-hats sometimes can get a little lost in PAs depending on what the other music's doing over the top. So you've got to set your own preference for what you like on that. Um, I might just give that a tiny bump if I can. Yeah, I just gave it a five point bump. Now one of the things that I can hear that is, is pretty loud is my little, um, not that, but my high, that guy, these bongos. So I'm just gonna bring them down a little bit. You'll find percussion sounds, if they're too loud, you'll suddenly lose the punch impact of the kick and snare because you just your ear's being distracted by the, um, the percussion sounds around it. All right, I just heard that crash go off. Now, I've just hit that and we've got a velocity of 106. Now, for me, I don't like my crash cymbals anywhere near that loud. They tend to really take headroom out of the PA when they come through and they just get on top of everything. So I limit all my crashes to 80 and I'm gonna use the velocity limiting function here. Give that a value of 80. Yeah, much better. Um, there are two crashes that are used in, in MIDI files, C-sharp 2 and also um, A2, which is crash symbol 2. Um, one C-sharp is the lower pitch and this is the higher pitch um, crash symbol. There aren't any A2 crashes in this song, so we're not going to hear that there. But I think those drums are done now. I'm happy with that. So now it's time to go over to Smooth and do the same preferences on Smooth. Now this was the louder of the two tracks, so this will be interesting to see where things are at on this one. We'll go to MIDI, List Editor, and have a look at our main volume. Yep, he's at a 127. We want to bring that to 120. The reason I don't run everything at 127 is I like a little bit of headroom because sometimes there's a sound that you've got in the MIDI file which can struggle to get over drums, and even when it's at its maximum output, doesn't quite make it. So this way, I've got a, a seven point little piece of headroom left. So yeah, I like 120. So sometimes it's a matter of bringing things down. Control change 11 is 127. Reverb is a little heavy there. I'm gonna change that to 40. Chorus, um, our program has put some chorus on drums. I don't like that. Gonna make that zero. Chorus can add unnecessary volume to drums as well. Okay. Then into the drum editor, and we're gonna have a look here. Yep, he's already chosen our, that kick drum. So we're gonna do the same thing again quickly with that. I can see already that the loudest kicks here are 127. You can see that maximum line. So there's no adjustment needed for that, and I'm gonna go with the, the programmer's decision on the softer kicks. We can see where they're at there. But the loudest ones are 127, so that's fine. Gonna to go to my snare drums, and check that out as well. Uh, that looks like they're also up at 127. Oops. I'm just going to hit this one here. Have a look at the velocity value. Yeah. So our program has already done that. Soloing these drums now, I'm just going to have a listen. Okay. So I think possibly the crash symbol is a bit big. That's a, yep. That's the A2 crash. So we're going to go through and do the MIDI limit on that of 80. This will make sure that nothing exceeds that. All right, so that's down. We need to find a C-sharp 2 crash and do the same change on those, which is there. Okay, so I'll just do that. That one is already at 80, but rather than trust that they're all being programmed like that, I'm just gonna do my limit on that. Righto, done. Now there's a lot of percussion in this track, just given the nature of what it is. So I wanted to have a listen through. Yeah, what I would do here is just bring down all those other percussion instruments 
by a little bit. So I've just condensed the track so I can see it all in one pass. And I'm going to highlight all of those. I'm just checking where, yeah. I'm gonna to have to do this line separately. So here's all of these percussion sounds here. And I'm just gonna use the velocity window here to bring that down by, oh, I'd say 10 or 15. I'll bring it down to 92. These cowbells, gonna bring them down to there. Okay, so let's hear it now. Okay, so let's compare our two drum kits. I'm just going to solo the one in smooth. And we'll just use our audio guy over here. So we can see drums hitting around minus five. And let's go to our drums in I Should Be So Lucky. Just do that again, comparing smooth. Yep, we're good to go. Okay, so that we've achieved our drums. Now you just apply the same technique across the track, do it to the basses. I always build from rhythm instruments up to all the pad and ear candy instruments. I like to get all the percussive rhythm instruments done together. Um, it's a better way to mix. And the bass and drum um, aspect is really important. You've got to be careful not to run your basses too loud. You'll definitely lose the impact and impression of power from your drum kit if you do. So be careful on that. Now I'm just going to fast forward, go through and level all the other parts of the track. If I did that in the tutorial, it's going to go on for about half an hour. So I'm just going to do it and then show you the end result. And here's the final result after we've done all the leveling, starting with song two. I should be so lucky. And song number one, smooth. So we have a much closer result there. Okay, so this is DJ from Music Tech Australia signing off. If you want to see more videos from me, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And also that little bell button down below, please click that. That way you'll find out when the next video is coming out. I've got lots to do on the subject of MIDI. We're going to look at how to create compressed MIDI basses. We're going to be looking at how to improve sounds of the bass, how to improve sounds right across the board. And uh, there are really good tutorial coming up on how to sound replace so that we can take a standard MIDI file and make it sound like something that was completely live. So that's going to be fun. And you can look forward to that video coming out. Thanks very much. Have a great day.